We get ready. We get set. We run into another hurdle. We get ready again. We get set again. We go. We're cruisers again at last. Good morning crew. Well, reality is setting in. It's, we're definitely on the countdown, Rob. What's going on? Uh, well, we're heading off today to start major provisioning. Yeah, and uh, you're getting food. Oh yes, as usual, I'm getting food. <laughs> I'm getting fuel. Now here in Australia, the, uh, there was an excise cut of nearly 25 cents. That stopped last night. So we're hoping the price <laughs> of fuel hasn't gone up too much. We were under the impression that it finished at the end of the month, right? Yeah, well, we've got it wrong. Um, yeah. And we're well, well. heading out to buy 200 litres of fuel in our jerry cans. Um, so, yeah, 25 cents a litre of 200 litres, that's, uh, yeah. that's a difference. So. That's a fair bit of food we'll that I thought I was going to be buying. <laughs> we'll see how we go. But, yeah. you know, the main thing is we've got a countdown on now. Yeah. Literally, we're looking at 10 days' time. Yep. Um, That'll be our final day planned on the dock. Yes. And we'll be uh, looking at our first weather window to go north after that. So we've got a bit to do. We've got provisioning, I've got an engine service, all the last minute things in a boat that we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll take you along for for the, the ride, path. it's Just, not sunshine yeah. and um, well, sundowners. It's, it's definitely not sunshine today either, is it? It's um, very overcast, so we're hoping that we can get all this done before the rain. And we're very grateful to Karen's dad, he's lent yes. us his, uh, his ute, so we can pick up all that fuel and, yeah. and pick up Karen's birthday present, which is a single kayak. We'll be throwing them on the boat before we leave. Yeah, very excited to have that on board. Oh, got to get out of here. Okay, yeah, we have this security here that Rob has to... Here we go, huh? <laughs> Spend lots of money today. Oh! I can feel my credit card shaking <laughs> in fear. It's the savings, not the credit card. <laughs> The anyway. suspendings. <laughs> the suspendings, yeah. Seriously excited. Can you see my birthday present up there? Yay! This is to replace the paddleboard that went missing when we had our knockdown. So now I have a kayak. So we already have one paddleboard, so we decided that we would take the option of having a kayak as well. So here it is, Aussie made and it's a Viking. Loving it. Here we are in the lineup. We were expecting a large lineup in this, weren't we? Because we were told yesterday that the lineup at Costco was right onto the highway. So discount fuel, it's still expensive, but not as expensive as we feared. First jerry can. First of many. Yeah, fuel's done, I stink. <laughs> now it's time to start loading up with like eating type provisions. Yeah, so we're here at Costco. I mean, obviously, Costco wasn't here when we provisioned the last time to um, go north. So this time we're looking forward to actually buying some bulk items. These will be all the pantry items today and then we will get the fresh closer to the day of and, leaving. And even the uh, even the trolleys are jumbo. They are massive. Here 
here at Costco, obviously you can buy everything in bulk. As you know, I absolutely love making my own granola. But when you can buy it here for $1.15 for 100 grams, and it's good quality with good ingredients, sometimes you've got to think it's better to buy in bulk like this than make it yourself. $4.35. This one's cheaper. So our last video showed us below decks. This is below below decks. This is down into the bilge and the engine today. So the main intake, saltwater intake and the strainer, I'm in here cleaning that out. And then that down there is our sea chest. That's our main seawater intake. Comes through one pump, goes through the, through the filter into that and then pumps to all of our salt water needs. And meanwhile, Rob is in, whoa, oh, no plumber's crack. <laughs> you are in here doing what, Rob? I'm replacing the raw water pump. Yay! It's got a weep. <laughs> and then what are we doing? Uh, then it'll be an engine service. Busy day today. Very. We're looking at weather. We certainly are. <coughs> looking at weather means. And we're looking at when we can get out of the marina. Yay! So we can. Looks like we can get out of the marina, but then we might be stuck at Bribie for a few days. We knew this was always the case leaving this time of year, didn't we? That we're going to get the north winds. Yep. Well, that's okay. Yep. Well, looks okay if we. We have everything ready, we should be able to get out of here on Wednesday. <coughs> there are never any guarantees, because we're still looking a number of days out and the weather can change quickly. But uh, yeah, that looks all right. Get across from Manly, just up into uh, the inside of Bribey Island. So just a short trip and we can sit there and wait until we can get up to Double Island Point. Wouldn't mind sitting for a few days at Double Island Point. That would be nice, but we'll have to see what's happening. And this is happy birthday time for our dream time. That is not for us. Wish we were still a 4 -0. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In our original paperwork for the boat, it seems that this week, 40 years ago, was when she was launched. So yeah, built uh, <laughs> by the Whitby Boat Works in Canada in 1982. Yes. So. Our beautiful home has turned 40 years old this week. 40 years young. 40 years young and she <laughs> is looking spectacular, getting ready to go for a, a trip on holidays up north <laughs> and uh, heading back into tropical waters before long. But, well, for us... Any excuse to have cake in our galley? So let's cut it. Ready? Oh, hang on, hang on. oh we're going to sing happy birthday. No, we won't put you through <laughs> that. We won't put you through that, but it is a nice little thing that it is about 40th. Yeah. And um, make a wish. Cool. Ready? Gotta kiss the closest boy. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm at breaking point today. We've all set. We have the boat provisioned. We're ready to go. Opened up the freezer just to put some bread products in that I grabbed, some buns, thinking it'd just be easy meals on the way sailing, some burgers and pulled pork buns. And the freezer is not working. 
all the cry bags meat is all defrosted. The half frozen we've left in there, we've put two extra fans in there. And this lot, this lot we're taking over to Dad's boat. He has an ingle on board which is actually running at the moment, thank goodness, but has nothing in it. So Rob's putting the dinghy down because he's not here and we can't get into his marina. So he's putting the dinghy down and he's going to take it round in the dinghy. See if we can get it frozen and sort out this fridge. <sighs> Living on a boat sometimes really pushes those buttons. Really, really pushes buttons. <clears throat> So our first job this morning has been calling uh, fridge techs, anyone that we can um, get hold of. Uh, the trouble is that the, all the tradies are so so damn busy getting someone to the boat's difficult. One guy rang back straight away, um, Dan, really do appreciate that. He's away working on another boat, can't get here till Monday. Um, so it's just a case I'll keep calling until I can try and get someone onto the boat situation is we defrosted the freezer, um, turned it off for a couple of days, cleaned it all out um, before, you know, to get ready to go away. And uh, we've turned it back on, it seemed cold. Um, all the food we bought, we actually froze down nice and rock solid in our, in our daughter's big freezer ashore um, and transferred it all to this one. Unfortunately, sort of uh, two days later, we've opened it up and found that um, while the freezer is still cold, it's not frozen and everything was thawing out. So um, we wanted to get going. Originally, we were planning on today. Uh, the weather's not quite right, so it probably would have been tomorrow anyway. But we'll just have to wait and see. If we can't get anyone before Dan on Monday, that's what it'll be. Well, this is the last bit, last of the washing to go in. Yeah! And we have the fridge mechanic coming in about half an hour. So in half an hour we will know if we're off the dock tomorrow morning. But we're preparing. We're nearly there. It's so exciting to actually go if we're nearly there. About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. Thanks, Trev. About to see the world in action. What we can be like with no distractions. We'll get away. This is what we waited for. I'm done living life with the lights out, down with my own doubt. Be free with me. Be free with me. A very nice feeling to be sailing across Morton Bay up to Bribie Island. Absolutely. And yes. <laughs> we've put away the fenders, we've put away the dock lines, and hopefully we won't need them again for uh, a little while, probably until oh, Townsville. That'd be nice, Townsville, I it, think. Townsville. It, it, no docks until Townsville. That'd be nice. Yes. We're just going to take our time to get up there, um, probably be up there by early December, but we've 
We're sailing north at a time of year when the northerlies blow three or four days a week. Um, it's and typical of us to do everything backwards. <laughs> and sometimes they'll blow for seven to ten days straight. So while we get southeasters, we'll keep uh, hopping north. And when the northerlies blow, oh, we'll, we'll just stop. We'll just stop and have to anchor somewhere nice and and enjoy and hang out. Hang out. We got this big guy in front of us in the shipping channel going into the port of Brisbane. So we've just slowed down to let him pass to make sure we go nowhere near him. Took a few degrees to starboard as well. Our closest point of approach on our AOS was showing us being about two or 300 metres. So we thought, no, we don't want to be that close to him. Our first ship of the voyage. I can't believe that we're finally off the dock. This weather is glorious for our first day out. We've got 11 knots of wind, downwind sailing, and we're sailing at four to five knots, which is just fantastic. It's been a tough year and a half, but hey, all that's now left back there on the horizon at the dock. When we untied those dock lines and stowed away those fenders today, it was all left back there and we cannot wait for the adventures ahead. We have been pretty lazy sailors today, Rob, with most of our downwind sailing just being with the main up. Well, the wind's been directly behind us, so it would have been pretty difficult. Oh, well, we would have had to have pulled out the Yankee, but oh, first day out, it's just nice to actually sit back. We've had Lovely five, five and a half knots of downwind sailing. Perfect. Who's in a rush? <laughs> However, we're about to make a turn to starboard. Yeah, it's a pretty significant what do you reckon, about 70 degree turn? Yeah, I'd say it's about 70 degree turn. Around the mark to go up a channel, so we'll need the jenny out I think. Well it looks a little bit more power won't it? And no fish. No fish yet. You need to stand by. Just have to make sure that that's well in my mind. Yep. Come around a bit more. We're 
end up, aren't we? We are. Ain't it? Oops. It's going to be a bit beamy on. downwind has certainly turned into a boisterous upwind. <laughs> yeah, we've got about a mile and a half of upwind before we can uh, turn again to enter the uh, Hummerton Passage. It's all about these shallow channels that we have to follow through sandbanks. Yeah, Horton Bay is very shallow and there are a lot of areas of banks that are you know, only a metre or less at flood tide. We're, we're nearly at the high tide, so we've got a fair bit of water to play with, but you don't want to get over the top of them anyway. Definitely not, because if we're nearly at the high tide, that means we're going down on time, so we don't want to be stuck. No. <laughs> Definitely not. The time to run aground is on an incoming tide, so it'll float you off. Well, the better time to run aground is never. Never. <laughs> However, there are two types of sailors, those that have run aground and those that tell lies. We have run aground. <laughs> we have. Head straight for the jet skiers and when we get to Denver, let's drop over. We're at five and a half now. How's the depth here? Four seven. Okay, anywhere you like, I reckon. Four and a half going down. It is so good to be back underway again. Next time on Dreamtime Sail, we encounter whales on our 80 nautical mile trip north to beautiful Double Island Point Lagoon. Oh, and we also catch fish, and Rob will go through all the details of the Spiro rig we used to have such success. We would like to say a huge thank you to our virtual crew members who sail along with us on our Dreamtime through Patreon. Knowing you think enough of what we do to sign on gives us a massive boost. Your support has encouraged and helped us to invest in a whole bunch of new equipment to improve our shows. If you'd like to find out how you could join the Dreamtime crew too and get special access and other benefits, click across to our Patreon page through the link in the episode description below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please click that button. It really helps us, and it's totally free. If you'd like to be notified when new episodes are published, hit that bell button as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll look forward to you joining us on the next episode of Dreamtime Sale.